Hey friends! All right, so today we're going to be talking about um, prompt validation and throwing errors in a uh, render method. So, Alexandros Katis, uh, I'm not sure how to say that name, but um, Alexandros um, asked me about this. Um, so this is the component that they shared with me. This is a page layout. It accepts some children. It'll render, you know, some stuff based off of those children, have a left and a right, whatever. Um, and then this is how it's used and somebody's using it incorrectly. And so they're wondering if it's okay for you to do some runtime validation um, in here. Um, and my answer is absolutely yes. Yes, it's okay to do this. Um, there could be other ways that you could accomplish this as well. Um, so I am I'm pretty sure that you could accomplish the same thing with prop types. Um, and so then it, you'd still get the warnings and stuff. It wouldn't throw an error and you wouldn't have to do uh, this manual stuff here. Um, so you could say page layout dot prop types equals um, children. And then um, this is going to be prop types dot array of, uh, and actually I wonder, let's see. Um, we might be able to do prop types dot shape and then an array um that might work let's see array of length yeah there's nothing nothing there so you may need to do a uh, custom prop type validation but that would allow you to uh, the benefit of using prop types instead of a runtime check here is then you could use babel plugin prop types remove prop types yep there we go um, and so then like for your production build, your prop types object will get removed completely and therefore you, you are shipping less code to the end user. Uh, so I'd probably go that route if you're not doing type to JavaScript. If you are, then I'm pretty sure there uh, should be a way to um, represent this using type JavaScript with TypeScript or Flow. Um, I am not going to spend a ton of time um, figuring that out myself right now but uh, i'm pretty positive that should be possible um, so that's probably what i would go about doing um, if you're not using type javascript then i i think prop types would be better but this is totally something that i i do on a pretty regular basis um, and so here is an example down shift dot js here uh, so this is a, a project that I, I made a while back. I'm not maintaining it anymore, but uh, this this fine fellow is. But um, yeah, we have some runtime validation check going on right here. Um, validate get root props called correctly. Validate control controlled unchanged. Um, this kind of stuff. And then I think maybe, yeah, we only do that for um, if our node environment is not production. And so that code's going to get removed um in a situation like when uh um in, in production mode and stuff we we even do some of that stuff right in here as well um yeah so it's pretty uh, a pretty good idea um but like i said using typescript or flow would probably be even better the challenge with that is like for a library like this is you can't enforce that people using your library are using typescript or flow and so having something that's runtime like prop types uh, benefits everybody whether they're using your specific um, flavor of type checker or not um, but in any case um, i say runtime checks uh, is totally legit it's even better if you can say maybe process dot env dot node uh, env not equal to production uh, or is equal yeah not equal to production and whatever your other check is that way when um, your code is built in other people's projects or in your own that code gets removed uh, because it's really only a development time thing anyway um, one thing that i'd note about this is that um, the react project does a ton of runtime um, warnings but they don't throw errors even for prop types they don't throw errors um, instead they log warnings and the reason behind that is when i was contributing to I contributed an error uh, or warning for the synthetic event system and as I was working on that they made it very clear to me that um, the code path that is uh, that is followed in dev 
should be the exact same code path that's followed in production. And so you have to write things um, in a way that does not um, make a change in the code path. So for them, this would probably be more like a console.error so that the code path continues on as it would be in production. Um, so a couple of tips there. Hopefully that's helpful. And uh, I'm going to, I already did my um, three minutes with Kent uh, podcast recording. So go check that out. Um, and then I'm going to be doing coding with Kent for the next hour or so working on my contact forms. Go, uh, you stay tuned. I'm going to start that live stream up here in a, a minute or two. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a marvelous rest of your day and a marvelous weekend. And I'll see you all next week. Bye.